Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the board would like to go ahead and call this meeting to order. Glad to have all five of us here now. Uh, it's good to have Commissioner Williams back with us after a long period of time of illness. And, and of course, the Commissioner Ward uh, taking care of her family. So it's good to have this opportunity. First of all, I'd like to remind all of us here uh, that are members of this board uh, to be advised to remind the duty of the state government that it's at. Uh, we all have that. I know we've had the ethics training and all of us understand that. But again, if you have any conflict of interest or the appearance of such conflict and are you're instructed to refrain from participating in any matter coming up before this board county commissioners with respect to which there's a conflict of interest or appearance of such conflict. And with that I'd like to ask uh, Commissioner Williams who lead us the invocation. I'd like to ask Commissioner Orr should lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. So everyone would please stand. <laughs> Lord, we know without you that we couldn't be sitting here tonight, Lord, doing the county business, Lord, and we ask you that you go with us through this meeting that we do what's right for the people. Receipts are beginning to roll in. So that has helped our um, 
the way we look in the bank, that's one thing is, once again, people are prepaying their taxes and not paying them in arrears, so that's, that's going to help that DMV line item. If you want to flip to page four, Any you'll see. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the state collects it. Mm -hmm. They seem to they charge. They charge, um, it, it, it's turning out to be about um, 1.5 cents um, out of every dollar that the state holds, which when they did the cost, what they did is they, they looked at what the cost would be statewide, statewide to do the collections. And of course, they're going to say, and we won't know it really until we get through a year of it, that the cost of doing that will be a, a smaller cost than we're, the counties are paying because we would have to spend out to create the, the uh, postcards and whatnot. We're still doing that. We're about to run out of that. Um, but they, they go ahead and just withhold that cost of collection from the, the calculated total of what we get. So really the tag agent don't get nothing. They're going to get a portion of that 1.5 cents per dollar, um, but we don't know exactly how much that 1.5 cents, how that's broken down. But they, the tag uh, offices, they do get a, a tab portion of that. And it will be an increase, I understand. Yeah, what from what I'm understanding. Like 48 cents? Yeah. It was yeah. 68, <coughs> yeah. So like it'll be interesting to see how it all shakes out in the, in the long run. Um, but we won't know for a year, you know, when we look at what our collections were for fiscal year versus what they are under the new system is when we'll know how it's going to shake out. Shake well, I was wondering, like, it was about to pay on both my vehicles twice. <laughs> you got <laughs> taxed early right. and often, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. And, of course, this first fiscal year, we'll be getting 16 months worth of revenue in the 12, so we'll have to back that out as well. But, yeah, some people are getting taxed. Kind of in the, twice in one year. Which is not the the front. Yes. Uh -huh. that, that first year. <laughs> Will that not cut a short some more in the future next year, maybe? Well, where the 16 months is coming into play is we're getting four months of the old year. The way they used to build was like three months in arrear. So we're getting that three to four months now that was built in arrears from last fiscal year, and then we're getting 12 months of regular revenue into the, the so it'll, it'll look like we're getting shorted if you compare 16 months to 12 the next year, but we, we'll just have to calculate and pull that back out so we can really see where we are. It and makes people like me get very right hard on people to get you started. Yeah, because they're getting hit twice. Yeah. It sure is. And you know, it's, it's hard when you try to make a budget and you're getting popped twice. Um, our total tax collections um, year to date on page four is $2.3 million for real property and, and 80, right at $81,000. We're $199,000 um, ahead of this time last year. Part of that is because we, the, the mill rate increased, the two cents and then $16,000 ahead on DMV, which is about the first time I've ever, we did roll, I think, about $3,500 ahead uh, the June 30, 13 year end, which was the first time ever, so we're running pretty close. Um, our, we've collected 40.57% of our levy this time this year versus 39.77% this time last year. And a bit of good news is we rolled out the um, calculations for the audit report, our tax collection percentage rate was 96.75% for this past fiscal year, which was a, about a 2.5% jump, um, which will help us come budget time when we're trying to budget, because we have to use the prior year audited tax rate to budget our tax revenues. So that will kind of ease us up, I hope, I'm afraid. Um, we're looking at right now about 3.3 million in current year taxes still due, which a big chunk of that will come in in December and early January. And then we've still got about 322,000 in uh, prior year taxes. We, we were able to whittle that down from about 345 this time last month. So um, the work with the tax collectors, they're working really hard to get these late payers in and they're still working on the foreclosure process, which is generating some 
some late payments coming in before that process takes control. Um, looking at page six, our total revenues for the month of September that were recorded was 969,000. Expenditures were a million and 99,000. Expenditures jumped up in September because we had to pay the QZAP payment, which is about 85, 86 thousand dollars. Um, and but we're still holding our own in our surplus at the bottom there. We've got 1.628 uh, million in surplus. This time last year we were at 1.2 in surplus. So I'm hoping that we can continue to hold on to that as we roll into the winter months. A little bit of bad news is our sales tax. Uh, for the last two years we've been running at a surplus on the sales tax collections. We collected in um, October for August $126,000 um, and we're running at about a $16,000 deficit from this time last year. So that tells me that our local economy is stalled and that's not a good thing. Um, I think the weather, it rained all summer, kept a lot of people <coughs> away and they just didn't spend any money here in the county. Um, and I think. Uh, and we have to contribute some of it to the shutdown. And to the shutdown, yeah. Because people couldn't get <coughs> to the here. Right. And they thought it was like everything would be closed. Yeah. And so they just stayed away. And so uh, that's, that's hurt us as far <coughs> as uh, what we're looking at in our sales tax revenues. Any questions on the highlights? I've got your budget report. This is through today. Um, if you look at it, we're, we're running as a county. Um, we still got about 75% uh, left in uh, our budget, which means the ideal was 70%. So if you look down the line, a lot of your departments are either running right along in the budget or, or, or when I say tracking behind, I mean they're spending slower than what um, we would estimate for this time this year. We did have a few departments where we're running, running hot. Our public buildings is running hot. We've had a lot of repairs that have come up that we've had to take care of. Um, we have one little, pro one little program and the health department is running a little hot, but overall the health department's staying healthy. Um, we have a couple of, of departments that we've had that are, you know, below the 70%, but that's because of the way we have to expend the money. Some departments that spend a lot of their budget early in the year and then they taper it off. Um, like finance, we, we expend a lot of ours by December because most of our budget's the audit, and so that's a big chunk that comes out. Um, you'll notice on the third page, daycare subsidy, we talked a lot about daycare. It's running hot, but that's because we're having to wait on the good old federal government to send us our money back. Um, Have you had any word from anybody about that? When we're going to get it? No. And I would say, you know, they're going to have to crank back up, so it's going to be slower than typical, I'm afraid. But overall, the budget's looking pretty okay. We're staying... Um, <coughs> You know, behind the curve and instead ahead of the curve, and that's, that's what I'm going to see when I pull my budget reports. Any questions on budget? When does reimbursement go out for, uh, I mean, we just, we, we want to go ahead and pay out for this month. When is that done typically in a month? When we pay for pay that out first? We, we pay it out first, and then we file our reports by the 15th of the following month and then you usually see it the next month. So I would say, we did the, like for DSS, we did the 1571 on the 10th. They went ahead and accepted it for processing and held it. So we'll probably get that money back in by the 15th of November for September. And then October will be December, but I'm afraid it'll be end of December just because they're having to crank the federal dollar back up. So, um, you know, you're looking at a, a good two-month span between, at the best, you're looking at a two-month span between the time that you spend the money and you get it back in. As opposed to, it was a month? Uh, six, six weeks, yeah. Okay. Five to six weeks. Okay.
Hey, I just had a, about three budget amendments. Um, one good thing is with, um, I just kind of looked at our trends. I'd already done like four or five budget amendments, maybe more than that this time last year. We don't really have to do a whole lot this year, which tells me everybody's being staying really cognizant. They get really uptight if they go in and do a purchase order that throws that red flag up. You know, what do we do? What do we do? I'm out of budget this line. I'm like, well, I guess we need to talk. You know, do we really need this, this line item or uh, or do we need to shift some money? But so far, everybody's working really well with the, the new system. The first budget amendment is to recognize some revenues that we received from the Duke Energy Assistance Funding Program. We got about $20,000 in for it. And that is pure, uh, no match money that Duke Energy sends us. Of course, it's restricted. And what we do is provide heating assistance to people who are um, in trouble either with their power bill or, you know, they're just basically their budgets not working to pay their power bill. So they're basically, Duke Energy is basically recycling their own funds, but at least it gets them paid. So that the first one is to recognize the $20,000 in additional funding that will go back out um, for energy assistance. And we can hold that money over. Just because I got the 20 in doesn't mean I have to spend the 20 out. Um, we were able to just accumulate in the bank account, and um, then we got about a three-year period to spend. The second budget amendment is to recognize where we are, we are beginning to get our incentive payments in for the electronic medical records. Um, you guys, I think right at the beginning of the fiscal year, gave the health department to go ahead to make that investment. Um, and this is just to recognize that the money has come back um, and that it's covering the outlay for the uh, medical records system. That comes through Medicaid. And then the set, third budget amendment is just tweaking a, an internal budget that's um, shifting some money out of jail uniforms into jail supplies, and it's just a washing. So that's the three budget. I think you'll note um, in your package I gave you the Smoky Mountain Center uh, third quarter quarterly report. Um, and Smokey is now sitting with $31,482,000 in the bank. They are running at a, right now, a surplus of $7.3 million through the end of September, just for your information. And I don't, I'm going to be interested to see how these numbers change in Western Highlands and Smoky. How much did you say they had? <clears throat> they have $34 million. $31 million. $31.4 million. Just for this area of the whole state. For Smoky. Area. Just in their cash money area. Yeah. And uh, 16 counties. Just in the area that they covered, the, 16, the current 16 counties, which is moving to 23 counties. That's not reflective of any funding that they would receive as the Western Highlands counties are, are being resolved, which are seven additional counties. No one was ever in the state. No. No, they're in bed with the state. Figure that out. And if they want, I mean, if they want to move, they want to get the commissioners out. Yep. Board members. Yep. So. And we have been actively against I think the, the manager will be talking to us some about that with what you can tell us at this point, another moving object. But basically, it's going to be paying into something we have no representation in. I was with that. And that number, because it, they really not, I guess they've just now merged, right? Have they merged? It's, it it's still in process. There has to be, uh, there, there, there was a vote to proceed with the merger, and then that has to go to the Secretary of Health and Human Services who signs that, and then there's a process after that of coming together with a new board structure, and, and you know, she approves that, her signature, and within 30 days it's official, or by April 1st, and uh, there's, there's still a few hurdles to cross between now and then. So really, these numbers reflect only the seven counties, 
So everybody interested to see. It'll be 16. Happens. It's actually 16. Okay. Yes, it, it, is, it is 16. Yeah, but new will be 16. No, the new will be 23. It's currently, it's currently 16. It's already 16. Yeah, they have oh. some new okay. river. They got oh. new river after all that. Okay, so I'm behind. So, yeah, we're going to try and grow to 23. Right. One other item I had was several months ago I came to the board and I requested to um, look at some other um, options for putting some of our cash into uh, a, a better scenario to get a better interest rate. And at that point in time I was looking at the North Carolina Cash Capital Management Trust Fund. But the more I talked with them, the less easy I got about what they had going. Um, because the, the interest rate they were quoting me was had some bond funding and things in it, and I just didn't feel good about it. And um, so I did a little research with the local banks, and uh, right now I can get a better money, ma money market rate with First Citizens, and I know this sounds ridiculous, but right now we're getting 0.01% per annum with with our current regular checking and I can get 0.05% with First Citizens on a money market and what my idea is to just shift some money that's sitting in the bank account we've got for EMS billing into this money market because what happens is with our EMS billing they make deposits on our behalf as the money's collected and that's a real easy source of money for me just to shift into this money market. So I went ahead and asked um, the bankers at First Citizens, pending your approval, to go ahead and if and get me a signature card if you're okay with me opening this account. And then I can just shift it in and then I can withdraw out of it like three times a month if I need to. I don't and, and my whole idea too with the, the big general fund checking is to eventually start sweeping some of that money out into a money market as well just so we can get a little bit better interest. Um, so if it's pleasing to the board, I've got the signature card ready so that we can expedite it and she can open the account up if it's okay with y'all. You said it was it's like a five fold increase. Yeah. I mean it's <coughs>
motion to go ahead and approve uh, having a signature card with those funds on the electronic medical reimbursement go directly into those funds because they're fluid to move back and forth. So moved. Have a motion. So okay. Have a second. All right. Any questions? Comments? All approved. Signal up with 10. All opposed. Blank sign. All right. Thank you very much. At this time, we'll move on with our agenda. We'll recognize the Andy Cable for the EDC stand and request. This needs to action. I believe he gave us a hand out too, did you, Mr. Cable? I did. I apologize if you didn't have a time. Just got uh, a little bit of information, and I'll talk through that if you want to, to kind of get together to speak on what, what's going on. Uh, we had, in the past, uh, probably a half a year ago, we went ahead and uh, granted through the EDC funding for Stanley's Continuous Improvement Program. Uh, about eighty nine below eighty nine thousand dollars that we did. They went through that cycle, you know, it was complete. They came back to us and asked again. That's what's in front of you now is the proposal to out of the EDC fund that uh, we fund another round of training. And that training also you can see here it incorporates a lot more. When I went to Golden Leaf this time they asked that we make sure that we incorporated more than just Stanley into that project. And it does. Uh, Adam Lumber Company will be participating, and you can see that on the front sheet. It's kind of got the county participants, and also uh, Fontana Village will, will benefit and uh, participate in this training quite a bit. And if you go to the third page, it kind of tells you exactly the third page on the first staple fund. It tells you exactly what the training is and the cost. It's the same amount again, but the last three items on there, the Kaizen trainings for the 10th. In the 17th down there. All of that is based on trying to help outside uh, participants. The TPM is a total preventive maintenance program, which Adam Plumber Company is, is uh, interested in getting some of that training or to keep their equipment up and running. And also, if they advance into doing something else, they'll be able to, to maintain their equipment. Fontana Village are doing specific training for them, which is uh, hospitality and different things. To, uh, you think about continuous improvement, it's just a process to do things better is what it is. So whether you can wait on five customers at your front desk in the hotel better and efficiently, that helps the whole run of business. So they're going to spend some time down there with them. And that's that section. Again, the training is uh, $98,100. $98, uh, the EDC fund at this particular time, I think last meeting you all made the resolution to uh, not drop that fund balance below $200,000, which is a wonderful idea, and I appreciate you doing that. Uh, it's right now, well, I got it from Becky the other day on 10 11 2013, it was uh, $286,878.66, which uh, almost covers the training now, and that was before Stanley's October payment, which is over $12,000 a month. So that, that will take the balance above that, and we have the funds in there to, to do the training again. Golden Leaf has already approved it um, uh, with all the, all the basis that you all approve it and uh, that we had more county participation and we have to monitor that. If you read through this article, uh, the Guthrie Group, who provides the consulting services, they will gather all that data and feedback to Golden Leaf for us. All the registration stuff will be done online and they will, they will keep the participation numbers knowing that they have to meet a certain criteria. The second staple thing, and that is just the agreement itself. It's, it's the same agreement that we've done the first time. Uh, the EDC actually signed that. Uh, the, <coughs> the vice chairman of the EDC board will sign that agreement. Uh, if you all are good with that, and we'll carry on just like we did before. I included in this, the last thing just a little summary of, the, of how Stanley is performing. And I highlighted, uh, the second page of that is I highlighted some of the, the comments that uh, Glenn Drillman made about the about the performance and how they're doing. Uh, the EDC board voted unanimously to fund it again, uh, just seeking you, you're, you're all approval for that as well. And uh, let me just, before y'all talk about that, I'll give you a couple of other highlights that are the last two pages. One is that uh, we did get uh, a, a approval, or we did get notification from the governor that we received our money for the ARC grant of $180,000 to continue upgrades to our uh, point of presence uh, here in the county uh, for fiber optics. And the last page is just an EDC economic development work with. These are kind of the projects that uh, the EDC, myself, Greg, and we kind of work on the, the fruition that they're already being, they're already done. But it's the amount of money that will potentially be sought in grants or the amount of money that has already been sought, the number of jobs that were created. And uh, I just did a little uh, income to
to the economy based on $9 an hour of the jobs that were retained or created from over the last little bit, just to summarize what's been going on. Okay, and I know, uh, Andy, I, I appreciate your uh, presentation on this. Uh,
If not, we will adjourn the public hearing and reconvene the regular meeting. This time, we would like to ask for the approval of resolution 5310 CT. Grant, and we have a motion. We have a second. We have a second. Any questions or comments? All approved. Say clear with the hand. All opposed, like sign. This time, I need some direction with this. Uh, Commissioner Elder, I see you have some information on this for the surplus of a transit van, a 2008 Dodge.
that we can stay on track and at the same time we can continue to keep the county commissioners apprised of our direction, disclosures, those sort of things. So having said that, I'll, I'll move ahead with these bullet points that we have here. It's our understanding that uh, Alicia Farm will be the point of contact for any dangerous animals that are we have that place located place. within the county. That's, that's a place that's today. Place. Um, that was news kind of for us, okay, going through the uh, due diligence and the fact-finding process. Um, we'll be putting out some information in the hotels and restaurants and that sort of thing. So people who are not from the Grand County area, tourists, if you will, visitors to our county, uh, would know what steps to take if a dangerous animal is identified in new contact. Okay, so that's pretty much the first item. Uh, secondly, um, any dangerous animals that are observed, we'll take some photographs of those and we have one of the ladies on the group that uh, will compile that information along with some uh, point of contact, not point of contact, but uh, uh, with information on where the animal is located and we'll be publishing that in the Graham Star along with articles uh, on web pages, um, emails, that sort of thing in order to try to help locate the owners. Many times there are people who are looking for their animals and they don't know where to start, especially with tourists that come to the um, So we'll be publishing that information and making it available, uh, as I said, to uh, the public area so that people will know where to go uh, to, to uh, uh, possibly locate and, and bring their animals home. Uh, copies of various North Carolina uh, state laws governing pets, rabies, vaccinations, etc., are attached for your review. We would just ask that they would take a second look and compare that to the ordinance that we have here within the county to make sure that we've got all our legalized on it and T's crossed and those sort of things. Um, I had, <coughs> excuse me, I had the opportunity to sit down with Mr. Cable uh, last week and he shared with me the, the most current copy of that ordinance and I'm still reading through that and doing some comparison on my own, but would ask that the commissioners and possibly the health department and also uh, uh, the county attorney would just peruse that. I know there's been a lot of work done on your end on putting this together. We just want to make sure that we haven't missed it. Um, fourthly, the animal control group would request that uh, uh, possibly the Graham County attorney reviewing potential, and I use that word uh, kind of underlined in that context, uh, liability that the county would have uh, if a dangerous animal would bite, cause an accident, or injure someone either as a citizen of the county or a tourist or another animal. We don't know. We're asking that to be reviewed possibly one more time. Uh, if it hasn't in the past to see if, if there is any liability at all there for the county. Okay. Um, at this time, I'm great if it's not too much of an inconvenience if you kind of give us an update on your conversations with Valley River Humane Society. In the last meeting, for those folks that work here, we had considerable conversation back and forth about um, jurisdictional issues and who helped who in the past and where we stood with that. So I know you've done a lot of work on that as well. So. Uh, sure. Uh, <clears throat> Friday before last, I met with Dr. David Ackerman. He's a veterinarian, Andrews, uh, who is also a board member with the Valley River Humane Society. Uh, I had a very good conversation. Uh, the beginning of the conversation revolved around what was uh, insinuated one time that Graham County was still uh, owing money to Valley River. Uh, he agreed that there was nothing to verify that and that we would move past that. Um, at that time, we were still in the middle of, uh, you know, the, the looming government shutdown and, you know, with some other financial woes uh, going on in the county. Um, I expressed to, to Dr. Ackerman that, uh, you know, I wasn't sure that the county could immediately enter into any form of contract with Valley River uh, in order to best address the needs of Graham County citizens. Uh, I had been told that Valley River was not accepting animals from Graham County. Uh, and that we need to, uh, I, I would ask about a river to work out an agreement where uh, residents of Graham County could take uh, unwanted pets to about a river and drop them off for a fee. And at such a time, whenever we are in a budget process,
process and a more uh, sure financial position in the county with what's coming down from the federal government, then uh, we would ask them to present something to Graham County, which we could then consider uh, as, a, as an agreement. No guarantees, no um, anything set in stone, but we would certainly be willing to, to sit down and talk with them about that. So the doors open for cooperation between the county to go out here. Oh, well, absolutely. Uh, we we cooperate with, uh, with with anyone who's who's you know willing to ask an issue. Sure. Uh, but that's where it's at, and they were supposed to go back and develop a, a structure as to what they would charge anybody for dropping off those animals with. Uh, okay. Thank you. And sir, I would like to add to um, yes, sir. at the last meeting I, I said that I would be asking to see if there'd be any interest in having a, a consortium of uh, counties in the West to try and come up with a plan for that. And we were at an NCACC uh, a function, a North Carolina Association of County Commissioners, and at that meeting there were, uh, there were representatives from each of those counties. I did all that I could at Enterprise to get around and talk, start talking to folks. And I don't know that it'd be really news to, to you and your uh, and your group, but you know, the, all the counties in our area are having the same concerns. Right. And uh, when it comes to that, you know, the the issue of Valley River rises up again and again. And I have some information I want to share with uh, with y'all in just a few minutes. Uh, but there's actually a survey been done in the state with regard to that about having those available. And I think a lot of them look at Valley River as being that regional location. And, uh, you know, whatever the circumstances are with relationship with Graham County, and talking to some other counties, they've run into the same situation. And that's not to go bashing anybody for any other reason. Just, just to say that they've had concerns with the services received as well. So that being set aside, you know, they're still open to try and find some remedy to that. And, uh, and I appreciate the fact that there is an animal control group. Um, I've been getting some pretty, uh, pretty mean-sounding letters and I don't know who they're from because they don't sign them. Uh, I would appreciate it if you would sign those letters because I'm going to read one here in open session with no signature to kind of get you an idea about the information that I'm getting. And I, you know, I appreciate the positive input that I, you know, about having our children be witness to puppies having their heads stomped in is not the kind of thing that I need to have put in a letter. And I don't know who you are or what your reasoning for it was. That is not constructive. And if you write me a letter, it's going to be public record. Because if they come checking me out, it will be public record. And I really do. I was, I was, I, maybe maybe I, I, won't, I, won't, I won't do that. But it's here if any of y'all would like to uh, comment to the fact that all they're going to get is uh, lip service. All they're going to get is this. If we're going to go with a, a contract with Valley River, I don't want to spend my time wasting doing that. Um, uh, you know, that wasn't constructed. But then, too, there was a group that uh, sent some, uh, some information uh, on postcards. I did receive those, and uh, I appreciate those, and some of the, the points that were involved in that about what they would like to see. Uh, issues of, of spay and neutering at four months of, of age, uh, going and requiring limits on, uh, on the number of animals that you can have before you have to register yourself as a, as a, uh, as a shelter. So I've, I've been doing my homework on that, and I'm not trying to waste your time, but it's not that somehow or the other uh, that I'm not doing my homework uh, uh, on this and trying to, uh, to come to determination about it. And do, I do appreciate the session law uh, that you gave me, but one of the things that I noticed first and foremost in all of this is it goes on a, pre uh, a, there's a presumption that there's an animal control officer. Uh, that means money, that means position, that means insurance, that means a lot of things. Uh, in order to have an officer available, plus automobile, a place to be, uh, and all those issues. And I'm not trying to be uh, negative in that, but that, that's predicated, that's predicated on that. One thing I did learn, and this might be a help to your group, is to understand that municipalities have more flexibility uh, than do county governments with regard to coming up with any type of animal control uh, 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 regulation, uh, ordinance. Counties can do it. It comes under nuisance laws. It comes under the, the fact that, uh, that there are three particular reasons that a county can act. And of course, you have to have the veterinary rabies uh, uh, situation be reminded and dangerous dog. Uh, some of the things that I heard mentioned in the statute has to do that if an animal is caught on wildlife games, game lands, there's a procedure for them. And then also, I know that you can't let an, an animal that is in heat uh, run around free in a community. It's a, it's a, it's a uh, 
It's a, it's a misdemeanor. Uh, and also, the, the other has to do with ranging animals. All of us that know anything about animals at all, they have a run. Animals, when they run free, they have a run. They have, a, they have an itinerary where they meet the doorsteps and everywhere else in the community. Actually, in this community, I know a man who's had his dog uh, caught somebody trying to put his dog in the back of their car twice, thinking that that dog was stray. And, uh, you know, and, and, and I understand that. So there seems to be a, a furor in this, and I want you to know that I appreciate every effort in this group and being able to be reminded of that. Um, but then, too, I want to give you some information that might help you and, and look at that. And it's, it is a website, and you've probably already visited this website, uh, but it, it's important to me that, that I let you know that, and I hope I've got this here. And I'm sorry I cut into your time here, but uh, also, um, the website is you probably have to do a little search on this one. The website is um, it is uh, www.ncraoa. It's the North Carolina Responsible Animal Owners Alliance, and their website is www.ncraoa.com. And you will find in there that there's a survey that was done in 2005 and it was updated in 2011. And some of this cursory information from this, the county that runs shelters in the state of North Carolina, there are 80 of them, 20 without. 29 private shelters in the state. 14 of the 80 counties that have uh, county run shelters also have private shelters. Six, six of the 20 without county have private shelters. License and kennel registration, 74 counties uh, do not require that. 26 counties do. Leash law, statewide, no, but there are there are no leash laws reported in 64 counties and 36 with leash laws. 89 counties with no breeding permits or restrictions. 79 counties without restrictions. Nine counties unknown. Well, that's a limit on how many animals you can have. And there's only one county in the state, Transylvania, that has a breed specific ordinance. So with that, I would, I would offer that uh, in response, and I'm trying to do my homework on it and understanding it. Uh, it does have a, a, a breakdown by county. And yes, there are more uh, townships and municipalities uh, that have ordinances than do counties. And the reasoning for that is, is you know, I hear news reports, 72,000 stray dogs in the city of Detroit. Uh, Los Angeles, California, they actually gather up the strays and put them in a plane, and they don't know where the strays are ending up. Uh, this is a universal, this is a universal problem, and it's one that needs to be addressed. <clears throat> and one of the things that all this is tempered with, and it's a hard thing to say, is financially, about being able to financially. I heard Gaston County mentioned, I did the research on it, and we don't even compare. They spend more on signage in Gaston County than we spend on the whole state but, uh, county budget. Um, and I'm not poor mouthing, I'm just telling you, we have a $12 million budget plus. And our school system has a larger budget than we do, and that's fine. I appreciate it. But you know, when it comes down to having positions, you can hire them at a uh, minimum wage, but you're still going to have to pay the insurance. You're going to have to pay workman's comp. You're going to have to pay all those things. So, and uh, with that, and Mr. Alexander, I appreciate it. I really do. And as I understand from the points that you have here, is that there will be members of this group to attend the commissioner's meetings to keep us abreast of what's going on. Exactly. And so, well, I'm sorry if I cut your time. You shared some great information. Well, I think I think it's important, and, and that we do uh, take a step of what we have better than what we don't. And uh, go ahead, Mr. Williams. The part that you say that uh, the county being sued for dollars for any liability. Uh, so it doesn't The only dollars that we could be sued for is what the sheriff's department has. Okay. And that would because we do not own any other dollars. Understood. I've been here for 65 years, and I've owned dogs ever since I was big enough to drag them. And there's probably less dogs in Graham County now than they ever have been. Uh, the Mr. Eller has 
trying to take care of them and determine what we do with these animals. Uh, because it's a sad situation when you have those. Mr. Edwards, you commented that it's a, it's a nationwide issue. It's not just for the camp. This is our backyard. This is, our this is where we live over there. So, having said that, thank you again for your time and your effort. Thank you very much. <clears throat> All right, at this time, we recognize anyone for public comment.
involving moral interpretive, moral interpretive, each sheriff is entitled. Now this is what it says in the law. Each sheriff by law is entitled to two deputies. Period. Okay, and in this, these two deputies or a number of deputies serve at the pleasure of the sheriff. It's the same way with elected officials in the Register of Deeds office. It's the same way with elected officials in the Clerk of Courts office. This board does not stick its nose where it doesn't belong. Okay. I wish you the best. Thank you. Like I said, I would just come in to try Good. to clear up the uh, this things that are being said because there's a lot of stuff being said and we're working through that situation. And this was one of them. That's, I thank you for your time. And I appreciate you coming. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions or comments for Ms. Soto? All right, this time, uh, Mr. Manager, we'll go ahead and uh, Mr. Cable, uh, we'll start discussion item. <coughs>
number of years, and they had gone back through and they had uh, developed these plans, and then it was just dropped because, and it could have been over funding, uh, it could have been over a lack of a, of a project. In our conversation with McGill, if we wanted to develop, before we could make any improvements to that site, we would need to re-engage McGill to update them on the, you know, the project scope, what we would need to do. Uh, prior to December the 31st, uh, and then we can extend the existing permit out. Um, what I have asked Mark Cathy from McGill to provide us is uh, what's it going to cost to re engage McGill? And uh, he sent an email over earlier uh, and indicated that. Uh, as best he could tell, there was there was uh, a little over five thousand dollars that that would need to be incurred uh, just for McGill uh, reengaging this, and then what he estimated was could potentially have been owed from the previous project scope that they did back in two thousand and six. I asked him uh, if he was you know. If, if, if there was money owed by Grand County, then I need to have invoices, scope of work, and uh, when those invoices were sent in a detailed summary. And he said, no, no, it's, it's nothing like that. He said, it's, so basically that's going to be the cost of what they would need in order for us to get re-engaged. Is that what you got from that? It's that hard to take from what he said. Uh, uh, what's the purpose of it, David, to do that? The purpose of uh, it is a development. In 2008, it came after I asked McGill to revise their plans to drop it down to one building and do a site plan, which they did. They And we have a total revise, and that was the question from the board was, is there a buildable site that we paid McGill on that could be possibly used in the future? And the answer is yes. yes. They do have it. And it's already been revised and stamped, and there's also a data permit on it. So 2008? 2008 is when they were re-engaged. The hole right there, kind of flight hole there in the midst. Yeah, that's the building site. And I have the plans. There's three different buildings out there. McGill provided us with all the plans. They provided us with everything they had. And so what we need is what I'm saying. Well, that's, we that, that's where I'm, I'm at because uh, is it worth money to re-engage McGill to extend a permit on a piece of property that we don't have a project designated for at this time? I mean, what else can, uh, do we need? I mean, well, another thing, if we fork, fork out $5,000 to McGill Associates for another permit and don't use it, how long does that permit stand good for? Is well, it, the 5000 is not for permit. The that's permit. the letter. Yeah, for that, and for that, for that's for that's for McGill to yeah. say, yeah, that's a you. Well, what it is, is it's $5,200. Yeah. It's what was owed from 2008 when they actually completed this project. This project has been completed, revised, and stamped for a building site. So it's just that they were never paid, and it was dropped from their, basically, the agenda. I don't know what happened, but I, I think they were looking came out at the time and trying to look at the building building there. So they asked us to do this work and they did it and it has been completed. So it is a buildable site. What basically the question was and it came from the board was, well, if we don't owe too much money on a site that already had set plans, the $5,000 is just to pay them for the plans. You don't have to use McGill in the future if you don't want to. It's just plans that you guys would own, the county would own, as a buildable site for $5,000. Not knowing how much more was put into it from the original project started back in 2003 and 2004. Well, myself, I wouldn't care if they ever come up here again. Correct. And, it, and, and that's the question. The question is not about, I don't think about the deal. It's about the law. I mean, whether you want to set up drawings or plans, and that was the question that the board asked. Right. If we don't owe too much and it's a buildable site, bring us some information on it. Right. Especially since the fact we were going to put the dirt over there. And I, I don't want to put the dirt 
over there as directed if I have to remove it or somebody else has to remove it down the road because if it is a buildable site, it has to be removed. Yeah, the rain see the, the, the overage on the uh, senior citizen building, that big stockpile that's up there, mm -hmm. that's got to be carried out. And if we want to know, and right there is that yelling, and right there it is. And that, that kind of precipitated in us looking at the well, so you know, we'll look at it, it gives you a great shot. It is included. Wrong.
Oh, I think it's the direction to say, put the dart in the hole, I'm not going nothing else, or, yeah, we got to build it beside. Even, even if you put the dirt outside the building site, and if there's approved dirt, you'd have to take it out, maybe? Outside of the building site? Right. Uh, I'm not sorry what you're asking. Maybe. Well, there's... If, if, if they took it to the high place and I put it on there, yeah. you wouldn't have to take it out. No, 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 no. This is just for that building site because it's already been approved to the state. And that's the Well, yeah, the expiration date at the end of the year. Is that was for the data for me. Dirt in. All you got to do is something fine to get like, that. Like maybe put a couple of loads of dirt in? Not even that. No, no dirt. It would be like maybe some real crap down. They would have to, you know, tell us what they wanted. So that means the permit's or, good for what? Huh? Would that renew the permit? That would renew the permit. She basically told me that all she needs to do is come out here just for a little quick stop visit and then she would renew it. And that would be our best bet if we're going to keep this permit out. Well, I would be I've been talking to this man sitting right here. If we can, you know, we own the, you said it, didn't you, Billy? We own the property right below it. Can we not just take that uh, overage on the senior citizen building and put it down there? On the, off the bank down there? And slow down. Oh, down on the, the existing property now or Yeah. Sure. And but then, rub the ice. Hey, but yeah, let me say this about that. I can spoil that, like Billy's talking about, to fix it and dress it up and sew it. And that's a, that's a great option. I don't have a problem with that. But if for any reason you ever do an archaeological dig or you come up with another site, that dirt will have to be removed. Am I correct? Yeah, that's what I You know, you have, you just recently were talking about having an archaeological dig, and certainly I can dress it in there, that's not a problem, but if for any reason you have to. Is there anywhere on that proposed site that you can store dirt without On the proposed home? site. On the proposed site? No. There's nowhere that you can possibly store dirt? Well, I mean, it goes off. The whole thing was to be filled. It's a hole, but it's got to be somewhere near there to be on. Oh, well, well, yeah, there is. Now, I can come up with a site. I mean, I can go behind the EMS up there where they cook the barbecue and go right in behind them and fill it up and take that dirt right there. That's not a problem. You just have to, you would just have to haul it down there and then, of course, protect it. So it, make sure you don't get wash off of it or bleed, as they say, going into the branch where Army Corps is going to be at. So the question was, is there a buildable site there? The answer is yes. You do have one ready to go. They want $5,000 for it, but as I read his email this afternoon, I'm not sure if he does or not. Well, I... Did you read what I said? It says... What's the invoice? I'm not clear about the invoice, he said. And actually, I've already provided you with everything that you're asked for. So well, I was saying, I've already given you the plans, which, by the way, he has. He sent me a PDF that I can go up and have a look for right now. But. Well, I, I said I'm, I'm not sure about whether or not we would, in fact, have to have some re-engagement by the guild. I think that the response in his email that you have before you there was sort of backing off whenever he sent an email saying that we owe $5,000. Yeah, there's there's, there's, there's nothing to say that, 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 email that we owe anything. Was, that's right. That's what I was just out. sort of saying, hey, wait a second, you know. And we've already provided you everything that you want. Right. So, I mean, the fact is, they didn't have to send that PDF over here with all of the approved drawings. I made a little draw, but I can make a big one right away. Well, let me ask you this. When, when, is the, when is the proposed that they're going to have to go and take that to overage off the senior citizen site? When? I mean, I need to do three weeks ago. Two weeks ago. But this come up, I want to make sure that you clarify it won't take but a day to do it. And if I spoil it, it won't take a day to, to do whatever, just dress it down. And I don't have a problem doing that if the board, I just, it was just two questions that you had asked and we right. just want to make sure that you know. All right, you're a billable site and there's an expiration date. And, and if there's any money in it. Well, what I think, personally, this is just me speaking out, I think what we need to do is have a visit by dinner. Yeah. And then whatever you can do about getting shed of the soil. We need to make sure that that permit stays alive. For day. Yeah. And we already have plans. And if what I and I kind of what Greg was saying, that last email we got said we 
We already provided you with everything we have. Check. So really I understand the plan right here. And you said they need to get paid for anything moving forward. Well in the first one they would like to have five thousand two hundred, but in the second one it was like pass by the hour if you use. Yeah. Right now we're currently having a contract. Right. Or they have nothing to say that we actually owe them no. any money at all. No, they have nothing to say that we actually owe them any money at all. I'm going to promotion we take a list we find out more about it. Can we get some more? I need to get it out. I don't know what we need to do. I don't, the site part of it. Would you put the dirt behind the building? This is the dirt at the seat of the building. You can put it behind the EMS though, right? As long as we go in and stabilize it, put the six pence up and whatever straw and whatever. So is that going to interfere with EMS functions? No, no. This is behind the grill. Oh, she can put it behind the building. Okay. It would just need to be really tall with the motion. I think the motion would be kind of big. Or I can pull it on the side of the bill. It did not include the deal and associate. Put behind the building and contact there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're making three and, and do not engage with the deal. We'll be contacting Dana. Like I said, well, this information right here that we came through today. So. We'll be contacting Dana sooner than later and try to get something scheduled. So I'm not sure what the time frame is on getting the dirt moved, but you never know. We may be able to get something resolved with Dana here to say, hey. Well, like, we just have to what we need to do is to get somebody that's not here to tell us what we need to do. Right. The minor thing, whatever she said, she said a mud, mud wash or something or some red wraps or something simple to get them out. Yeah. Oh, sorry, skip one. 